Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ronaldo Moore with PPG. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you will know when I drop these. Today's topic is all about the code violations. These are violations that I find day in, day out, going from job to job. Um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> there are a lot. So I decided to put together a code violation series of, uh, of videos uh, that will talk about framing, building final type code violations, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, all residential. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you will know when I drop these. So for all my building inspectors, my home inspectors, my contractors, this one is for you. Watch, listen, and learn. So let's get this thing started. Did I talk about today's topic? Today's topic, today, the one that you're about to watch, I don't know if I, if I said, that, said this or not, but today, the one that you're about to watch is about framing and building final type of violations that I see day in and day out. So watch, listen and learn. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys get something from it. You guys got comments, please hit me up down below. We can, we can chop it up, go back and forth. I don't, I don't claim to know everything. Um, I know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but I don't claim to know everything. So we can chop it up, go back and forth. Hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys are staying safe. Have a great day. <clears throat> This one is for my building inspectors and my framing contractors that deal with, with engineered trust. Um, these, these are made in the factory and are delivered to the job site. And there are times when I come across broken trust. A sign for me is when I see a two by four nailed right next to a trust or a court, um, that's, that's a red flag for me. And sure enough, this one is broken. I'm going to try to get up there and, and kind of zoom in on it and let you see where it's broken at. But that's where it's broken right there. And they tried to nail a two by four next to it to, to repair it. Um, now, for my building inspectors, when you run across, when you're doing a framing inspection, I always take a look up if you're, if you're dealing with engineer trust because they tend to break them and they won't let you know and they'll like right here they'll try to just just repair it without letting anybody know uh, for my building inspectors you need an engineered letter with an engineered drawing showing the correct way to to repair that trust and you need it repaired per that that drawing for my Framing contractors always let, let the GC know if, if there's a broken trust. A lot of times they're, they're delivered already broken. You know, I've, I've witnessed trucks literally just slam them down on the street. And, you know, just so they, they could be already, already broken when you, you start to, to install these, these trusts. So always let the, let the GC know what's going on. Um, and for building inspectors, please always, when you're, you're doing a framing inspection, take a look up at the, tr at the trust, make sure they're not broken. Um, these trusts should come with a drawing, a set of drawings showing where they are to be braced. A lot of these, these trusts need to be braced in certain areas. You sh those drawings should show where they should be braced. And also, Check the gusset plates as well. I'm gonna try to get you. That's a that's a gusset plate right there. Let me zoom in on it. That's a, a gusset plate right there. Check those as well. If those are missing or bent, those need an engineer's letter as well, and they need to be repaired correctly. So with that, another quick one that I catch a lot or I find a lot. I fail a lot of framing inspections because of this. Um, when dealing with four ply LVLs, they cannot be nailed together. They have to be 
bolted together, half an inch bolt, nut and washer, are a long screw and they have to be staggered. These are nailed together. So, um, and this is a four ply LVL setup here. Um, they have to either bolt it or screwed and they have to be staggered. And the weight has to be transferred down to the slab. So we got four ply LVL, we got four studs, and that weight is being transferred down to the slab. All right, we're back again. Back again with another quick video. This one is for my contractors. I'm here doing a framing inspection, residential. Um, got a quick, quick tip for my contractors. Let me get this camera down. Um, this particular house, they framed up using uh, the engineer trust. You can see these. One of the things that you never want to do is, and let me get up here, is nail these these trusts to the to the interior wall, interior top plate of a wall. And this one is nailed. Um, they're all nailed to the interior top plate wall of a house. You never want to do that because. These trusts, they have to expand and contract during temperature changes, um, you know, throughout the year. So you never want to do that. Um, Simpson makes a nice little, nice little slide, I guess, kind of a piece of equipment that, that you can nail to the side of the trust. And it's like an angle slide brace bracket type of piece of equipment that it allows it to slide back and forth, expand and contract. You nail it to the side, I'm sorry, to the top plate, and you attach it to the trust, and it allows it to slide back and forth, allows it to, to expand and contract. We're back. Uh, we got a couple of framing, framing violations, a um, couple of issues. Uh, the first one is a, we have a triple, I think that's a two by, maybe two by eight triple here. Um, and it's catching that load at that, at that hip point. You got a brace coming down and it's catching that low point with that, that triple two by eight, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> I think two by eight, but as a triple, it's going across a top plate. Um, so we have one joist coming across. We, we, then we got three coming back the other way. And those are both low points. So we, we're coming down to a double, double stud, double two by four stud. That probably should be three to four, maybe four instead of two. I see a lot of that. Also, uh, and we're on the top level of a, of a house, new construction. That wall adjacent to that attic area. If you can see there, that's the attic area of the garage. Then we have a wall that's adjacent to that. That wall should be two by six stud wall instead of a two by four to accommodate a R18, R19 insulation. So that's another one. Back, back with some more framing code violations. Uh, this, is, this is one I see a whole lot. Uh, let's talk seal plate or bottom plate and anchor bolts, where anchor bolts or straps are required. Anchor bolts are required 12 inches within 12 inches of the end of a seal plate or bottom plate. Like this particular situation here, we, we, we have strap, the strap there, but within 12 inches of the end of that seal plate or bottom plate, we need, we need a bolt um, in, in every six feet thereafter. Um, he didn't do it there. Uh, this is a door. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but we don't have, that's the beginning of the, the bottom plate. We need one right in that area. Definitely one within 12 inches of the start of that one. And this is it's like that throughout this, this framing uh, inspection here that I'm doing. Um, Definitely right there. We, we have a strap on, on one side, but the beginning of a seal plate, we need, within 12 inches, we need anchor bolt. 
All right, we're back again with with more code violations. Uh, we're, we're talking about framing. I'm, I'm talking about framing today. Um, and what, you're, what you are looking at is a low bearing wall. Um, this is a three story uh, house, brand new. Um, and that is a low bearing wall. All low bearing walls must be bolted to the slabs. Bolted, all low bearing walls. I, I see this every day, day in, day out. Now, the exterior walls, which are low bearing, they are bolted. Um, you know, 12 inches within 12 inches of the end of a sill plate in every six feet. But a lot of times they forget about the interior low bearing walls. Those must be secured as well. Back, I'm back in with some more violations. I know I stated earlier at the beginning of this, this video that that I would try to keep most of my violations residential, but I had to make a stop at a, at a commercial spot and I kind of ran across this one. Um, has to do with framing. Uh, look, looks like the plumber ran his, drainage ran his drainage line through the studs and maybe he had a change. Maybe the owner changed it. And looks like he removed them, left these huge, huge holes in the, in the stud. Y'all kind of hit me up down in the comments and let me know how you, you guys handle, handle this type of situation, where you are. Uh, down here in Georgia, we basically double up on, on studs like that, uh, especially if it's a, a low bearing wall. Um, if the drainage line was, was still there, we'd probably, I would suggest they add a stud shoe around that, around that stud. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with stud shoes, just, just go online and Google, but um, let's see. And there is, and this is a commercial little plaza, little strip plaza that they're renovating. It's another, another framing issue I see a lot of on commercial and residential. Um, when you're framing out a chase that they did as well, what well, they framed around that, that post, you have to you have to seal the top of that that chase i hope you can see that i know the, the lighting is probably not that good but there's a they framed around that post they create a chase so you have to seal the seal the top of that that chase and here's a another one as well all right we're back back again with some more code violations I am doing a building final residential and today's violation, let's, let's talk about handrails. Um, handrail height must be between 34 and 38 from the, uh, from the nose of that, that tread up to the handrail between 34 and 38. The non-circular perimeter of a handrail can only be, well, should be between four and six and a quarter. So that means this distance, this distance, this distance, the perimeter around this non-circular handrail, the max is six and one quarter. And it's, it's well over that. And also the handrail must terminate back in to the wall. Um, and we also need inch and a half uh, clearance here. We're, we're fine here with the inch and a half, but it should terminate back into the wall and the perimeter of this non-circular handrail can't go over six and one quarter inches. I, I see this one a lot more than I should. Um, the stair risers. Max height on the stair riser is seven and three quarter. That's it. That top one is clearly higher than, than seven and three quarter. And you can't be over three eighths of an inch difference between heights of risers, for, between the riser height for that whole stairway. So max height, seven three quarter, can't have more than three eighths difference for that whole stair stairway there for each riser 
a lot uh, all the time actually um code says anything over four risers four more risers require a graspable handrail and that is clearly more than than four risers back again with, with more violations the one that we are dealing with today is the and this is a bedroom and you see those those french doors leading into a a bathroom and i'll go open one up for you to take you that's that's your bathroom there your shower water closet dual vanities the issue that i'm having today is the the glass that that's in those those french doors and any glass on the door must be tempered and the way that you find out is it should be etched in the corner code so it should be etched in the corner that it that it is tempered um and that gla this glass is kind of frosted so and, and i didn't see any etching um but i'll contact the manufacturer i'll I, well i will attempt to but code says it should be etched in the corners one for you today this is one that i don't see too often i'm down in a, in a crawl space new residence house just built crawl space there's a fuel fired appliance if you can see it i'll move up on it it's a high efficiency unit gas and the issue is 2018 code and i'm not sure that the section but a uh, fuel fired appliance down the crawl space that the ceiling area of the crawl space must be drywalled because of the fuel fired appliance down the crawl space. I think it's a it's a fire protection issue. And this is the and there are a few few exceptions along with that, but I haven't come across this is my first time coming across this one. Um